Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the team at Yeomans Honda Guildford, I'm bringing you an in-depth exterior and interior tour of a 2017 Honda Civic Type R. As the fifth generation Civic Type R, and released on the anniversary of the 25th NSX Type R, this model has been developed as a pure performance vehicle, rather than a standard hatchback with only a few boisterous body panels and a louder exhaust. It is formed around a completely new exterior aesthetic that ditched the rounded contours of the last model for a more sharp and dynamic design. As a result, it is said to be one of the very few hot hatches to produce usable downforce. This has been made clear by its very impressive Nürburgring time of 074380. That's faster than the Gallardo Superleggera and the Pagani Zonda C12S. It does have a slight power upgrade on its predecessor, but its improved pace is achieved mainly through a stiffer chassis, which is 38% more rigid than its predecessor, new suspension setup and new transmission. As well as the base Type R, there's a slightly higher spec, slightly more expensive model known as the Type R GT. The GT unlocks three more paint options, comes with parking sensors, Garmin navigation, dual zone air conditioning and blind spot assist. As this model is the GT, it is finished in the optional sonic grey pearl paint. From this angle, we can see how the engine sits right on top of the front axle. The car's front wheel drive setup is carried over from the last Type R and is powered by a lighter version of the front mounted 2 litre VTEC turbocharged four cylinder engine. It produces 316 brake horsepower and 295 pounds feet or 400 newton meters of torque, which is up 10 brake horsepower from the last model. This powertrain can produce a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of 5.7 seconds and a top speed of 169 miles per hour. These figures represent that of the old model. At the rear is a new tri exit exhaust system that is said to directly improve performance by improving gas flow and therefore is not for show alone. Let's see how it sounds, first in normal and then in R. It sits on 20-inch front and rear, multi-spoke piano black alloy wheels that are the only wheel option. Stopping power is provided by vented and drilled 350mm front discs and ventilated discs at the rear. Stability is in part provided by new front McPherson struts and independent multi-link suspension at the rear with adaptive dampers. Now we've finished the model overview, let's start the exterior tour from front to back. There is a very angular carbon front splitter at the bottom that wraps around the side until eventually folding into the lateral winglets. This is an option. Above, there is a small grille with the intercooler behind it and pentagonal vents with small lights and further intakes at the far edge. Above, there are two further intakes divided by a gloss component with the Honda badge centrally and Type R insignia to the left. Above are the LED headlights with LED day running lights. Next along is the longer, more aggressive angular bonnet with its central intake duct. This new car has a 46 litre fuel tank with a combined MPG of 36.7 MPG. Now moving around the front arches, we find what appears to be very purposeful hot air release vents, but are in fact aesthetic only. These run down to the carbon effect side skirts on either side. Above are the electrically adjustable wing mirrors with integrated indicators. Along, the smooth door handles with only a small black button hint at the car's keyless entry system. There is a main aesthetic line that runs along the side of the car, but just before the rear handles, this is joined by another, rising out of the smooth doors. Just in front of the rear arches, the side skirts rise up into a very slim winglet. Flowing on from these are the swollen rear arches. Moving up, we find the shark's tail antenna and aggressive panels that extend the dynamic lines of the roof out of the back of the car. A filled spoiler can be specced here. Below is the characteristically large spoiler that has been moved back from its predecessor. Further back is a gloss black strut with an integrated brake light. The rear of the Type R does not disappoint, but continues the rather extreme angular aesthetic. The rear lights provide an integrated feel as they wrap around the side of the car and also onto the strut above. There is a small Type R insignia badge on the right hand side, with a reversing camera centrally. There are very slim hot air release vents behind the rear arches, with these large pentagonal sections on either side. The aggressive rear diffuser flows down at the sides and back up in the centre, with two small fins either side of the tri-exhaust outlet. Now we've finished the exterior tour, let's move inside. The key is far less dynamic than the car, and features controls to lock, unlock and open the boot. The door feels light and opens easily. The interior is upholstered in fabric and suede style cloth with plastic inlays, a leather steering wheel and red piping and accent.
I'll start the interior in-depth tour with the doors. The top panel is smooth and runs into the first door speaker, a tweeter. A slim carbon effect inlay is below with red piping. The door release ahead with the internal locking control. Below is a suede cloth panel with red contrast stitching. The armrest is below with controls for the electric windows, locking and external mirrors. At the very bottom is a deep open storage area with a stepped section and second door speaker below. Now moving inside, the side skirts make the skirt area look wider than it is, but ingress and egress was very straightforward. In the driver's footwell we can see the alloy pedals with the bonnet release catch to the right. Above are some GT only features like lane assist, collision mitigation braking, as well as parking sensors and traction control. Next is the keyless start button with the first manually adjustable air vent above. Moving inward, we find the multifunctional leather upholstered steering wheel. On the left are controls for trip screen and call setting, airbag centrally, and controls for cruise control and lane tracking on the right. The start sequence is quite bright and sporty with the gear change lights appearing centrally. From left to right, warning light array and engine temperature. Central information screen with drive mode top left. Rev arch, speed below, trip under and temperature, mileage and time last. Fuel level and further warning lights are on the right. Performance information regarding the turbo and engine are the first two options screens on the trip. Next is the digital lights, reminiscent of F1, that indicate optimum time to change gear. Next is the G-meter, an apparent must-have in any modern hot hatch, as is the stopwatch that is next. General consumption information is next, remaining mileage and average miles per gallon. Average speed and total comes out after, with navigation and sign recognition. Limiter notification for the trip is next, then seat belt checks. Service schedule is next, then media connectivity, phone connectivity for calls and messages. An option to change units from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and vice versa is next, with general information last. These options are selected and interchanged using the directional pad found on the left of the wheel. Moving along, the dash ahead is uncomplicated and features sensors centrally and the usual demist vents. There are two easily manually adjustable air vents below, with the hazard light button between them. Below is the 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system. The quick access menu buttons run along the right side for audio, home, volume, menu, and back. From left to right, the first option available is Nav. Powered by Garmin, it accurately shows location, direction of travel, duration and traffic. Next is the menu for phone connectivity for calls, emails and messages. Menu for general settings comes after, which offers camera, audio and vehicle settings. Audio connectivity options are next, but also to control the DAB digital radio. The volume controls to the side are easy to use to reduce or increase the volume, but may be slow to react to when driving. Info provides information regarding the general trip computer and system information. Below are controls for air conditioning, ventilation and demist. There's a small passenger airbag status display below. Under this is a GT spec only wireless charging station for compatible devices. The transmission is a new alloy topped, six speed short shift manual that comes with a new auto rev matching capability. The engine will increase revs momentarily when changing down gear to ensure a seamless transition. Behind the gear stick is a small control array. Here we find stop start, engine mode switch, the car's serial number plaque, brake hold and parking brake. Moving back to the engine modes, there are three, comfort, sport and R. These gradually increase and intensify the throttle response, steering and damping to become more track focused. From comfort to R. Behind is an angular cup holder with a suede cloth upholstered adjustable armrest behind. There is a small latch inside that is used to lift the armrest up to reveal a larger storage area that includes USB and auxiliary inputs. The top can be adjusted accordingly. Moving back, the new bucket seats are upholstered in red and black fabric. You feel quite low in the car when seated. They are also comfortable and feel as though they would provide good support. They are manually adjustable with controls to the side and underneath. We can now take a look at the rear seating. The rear doors come with high and low speakers and storage below. The rear bench seats too with no central pull down armrest. If we look forward we can see the carbon fibre effect on the front seats. As I've said in my previous videos I'm 183cm tall. 
The driver's seat ahead is moved into an appropriate driving position, yet there is still a comfortable amount of room both ahead and below. Now we've finished with seating, we can look at the car's remaining storage capacity. There is a well-sized, illuminated glove compartment on the passenger side. Moving outside, the rear boot can be opened with the key or button inside. It has a capacity of 420 litres with the seats up and 786 litres with the seats folded. It features the pull-out divider above and can also be specced with the dividers. Now moving back inside briefly, there are well-sized sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. Centrally, there are reading lights with an auto-dimming rear view mirror. So that concludes my in-depth exterior and interior tour of the 2017 Honda Civic Type R. Thanks again to Yeoman's Honda Guildford for the opportunity. All their contact details are in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.